Notating a set of numbers. So the very first thing I need to do in this video is give you some definitions here. Um, notating a set of numbers. Well, what does it mean by notation? Notation is the way that something is notated, hence the way something is written. Now, in math, we see lots of unique symbols, and that always goes back to the way that it's notated. So sometimes you might see me write um, great idea but bad notation. That means you're probably thinking the right thing, but you've just written it incorrectly. The other thing that I need to define here is a set. A set of numbers is a group or some grouping of numbers. Now, we can group numbers in lots of different ways. You're going to see one style of grouping numbers in this video, and then in the next homework, you're going to see a different way of grouping numbers, and that's perfectly fine. Just note, set means a group or grouping of numbers. Now we need to put these two things together, notating a set of numbers. So if I pick a group of numbers, I need to figure out how exactly can I write or how exactly can I notate that group of numbers. Well, in this video, you're going to see three different examples of notating a set of numbers. The first example is just graphing those numbers on a number line. So that's why this set of videos is put together with the number line videos. Now I have three examples here. They all look identical at this point, but I'm going to alter them very minutely to show you the differences in examples that might seem like a little difference, but it actually makes a big difference overall. So the first thing that we want to do is I want to graph the set of numbers between 4 and 17 on a number line. Now we saw um, how to represent a number line earlier. A number line is basically a horizontal line with arrows on both ends. And yes, you need the arrows on both ends. That's because the number line goes forever in both directions. Now, when we've seen it before, it had lots of tick marks on it with each number represented, typically whole numbers. But that's actually more information than what we need now. So when I draw these by hand, I'm going to give you the minimal amount of information that we need. When you're working your online homework, it will probably already have the tick marks on there. That's fine. But if you ever have to hand in written homework, minimal amount of work is always better. The first thing I'm going to do is put the numbers on the number line that we care about. So in this example, those numbers are only 4 and 17. So notice those are the only numbers that I have on here. I don't even have the number 0 on here. And that's because 0 does not apply to this problem, so I don't want to put more information than what I need. Now, I want to represent all the numbers between 4 and 17. Well, the way that we do that is we shade all the numbers between 4 and 17. Now, you need to shade directly on top of the number line. Don't shade above it, up here, or below it, down here, or any sort of way. Shade it, and we do that by just basically scribbling in between those two numbers. So at this point, you might think that you're done. And that's why I've listed three examples here, because I'm going to alter them very small to see that it's actually going to make a big difference overall. Example two, I'm going to say all the numbers between 4 and 17, but this time I'm going to include one of the endpoints, so I'm going to include the left-hand endpoint 4. And I could have included the right-hand endpoint just the same. But now, if I graph these on a number line, I would start the same way, start with my number line, write down the numbers 4 and 17. I'm going to shade them in between. So that means I'm talking about all the numbers between these two groups of numbers. But I need to separate example 1 and example 2. So how do I separate example 1 where I don't include either of the endpoints, meaning I start at the numbers like 4.00001, and I go up to 16.99999. But in example 2, I include the endpoint 4. Well, you might have learned in a different class, we do this by open and closed circles. And I'm going to review that, although we're going to change it for this class. So on the endpoints, you may have learned an open circle means that it's not including the endpoint. And a closed circle means that it is including the endpoint. So for these examples here, on the first one, I'm not including either of the endpoints. So I have an open circle on the left and an open circle on the right. 
For my second example, I have a closed circle on the left because I'm including that endpoint and an open circle on the right. And if you've learned it that way, that's awesome because now you know exactly what we're going to do. If you haven't learned it that way, no big deal because we're going to change it. So I've cleaned my endpoints here because I'm going to show you how we're going to change this. So instead of using open and closed circles, we're going to use parentheses and brackets. And basically we change open circles to parentheses. So parentheses means that we are not including the endpoint. And brackets means that we are including the endpoint. And your parentheses and brackets will always cup wherever you shape. So in example one, four is a parenthesis and 17 is a parenthesis because neither one of those endpoints are included. In example two, four is a bracket because I'm including that endpoint, and 17 is a parenthesis because I'm not including that endpoint. And notice that these parentheses and brackets, notice that they line up exactly with my tick marks the way that I've drawn it here. Don't draw the parentheses over here and the bracket over there because that actually includes this set of numbers in between four and whatever number you've drawn there. So make sure you draw those parentheses and brackets straight on top of your number line. Now I'm going to move on to example three and, and again I'm going to alter it very minutely. So in this one I'm going to put the word including. Now, if it just says the word including and it doesn't have a number behind it, that means it's actually including both of the endpoints. So I suggest that you pause the video and draw your own number line here. So it's going to look very similar to the last examples. I have my number line with the numbers 4 and 17. I'm going to shade all my numbers in between, going all the way up to the tick marks. This one is including both endpoints, so my left is going to have a bracket straight on top of the tick mark, and my right is going to have a bracket straight on top of the tick mark. So that means that this number line includes the endpoint of 4, it includes the endpoint of 17, and all the numbers in between. So this is an example of graphing the numbers on a number line. This is where I'm going to end notating a set of numbers part one video where we went over what notating a set of numbers actually means and we talked about how to graph those set of numbers on a number line. In the next video, we're going to talk about interval notation and set builder notation, the other two ways to notate a set of numbers.